Since early 2024, I've been removing Samsung SmartThings from my home and adding Homey Pro to take advantage of their advanced automation features, their reliability, and a few other things. It's been quite an experience and a lot of it has been great, but there have been some drawbacks. So today, because a number of you have asked me how it's going, I'm gonna give you both the ups and the downs of moving from Samsung SmartThings to Homey Pro. We're gonna do a little comparison here. Here's the too long, didn't watch summary. I've only really been frustrated by one thing, and that is the fact that Samsung has more compatibility with more products. And when new products come out, usually I have to wait to get them integrated with Homey. It's been the only real annoyance, and that obviously comes with Samsung being a huge company with many more users. It has meant that I did lose some products in the transition and that is obviously an annoying thing. So for any of you who are potentially looking at this move, feel free to ask me what you're using in your home or watch our beginner's guide with Homey Pro. There I show you exactly how to figure out what will work and what won't. But everything else, has been so much fun and honestly so exciting. The Homey app is just as easy as the SmartThings app. It's intuitive and it's so nice to have a stable web app. And it's in that Homey web app where you do these advanced flows, which are so powerful and so exciting to have access to. It lets me create incredible automations. And one of my favorite ones that I've done is just cycling through these different lighting effects called moods. I'm doing this with an old Ikea remote and it's been bulletproof. It changes my home every time I touch the button. Now, that's something that I can no longer do with Samsung since their removal of what's called WebCore. And even trying to use WebCore to do this would have been a little harder than it is with Homey. So I like how easy it is and I like how sophisticated my automations can be. But my favorite part has been that I'm not dealing with the outages that I'm still seeing over on Samsung's platform. I'm still getting these emails that say the whole platform is down for a few hours and I'm still getting notifications from the app that say some device has disconnected. Now, I have three SmartThings hubs in my home and somehow each one of those, they go offline more than Homey has. It's not a massive amount of outages or anything like that. So don't get me wrong, but I just want higher reliability from my home and I've been excited to have that. Homey has only really had reliability problems for me because I'm constantly playing and testing and changing things or because I'm using things that aren't actually compatible with Homey or I'm using things that are just inherently unreliable. So it's my fault when it's unreliable, except for one situation that I'll explain in a bit. But the other thing that I'm really enjoying is the community with Homey seems very helpful. It's not a huge community and obviously it has fewer people than Samsung ever did, but it's been very welcoming. There's a developer community that is creating things that you couldn't otherwise do. And for myself, I was really excited when I found Heimdall. It's a DIY security system, and this is created by a community developer. I've installed it, I'm using it, now I have that security system that automatically enables when we're out and automatically disables when we're coming home. So that's the summary of it. It's been great, and I'm not feeling this need to run to some other system. I'm not missing a bunch of features or a bunch of things. I struggle once in a while to find a device that works with Homey. I've been causing most of my Homey reliability issues. I've been switching over mesh systems to prepare for a video about Wi-Fi 6E versus Wi-Fi 7. I've been bringing in products that are not compatible with Homey. And I've been doing it on purpose to see where I can push the lines, right? And sometimes that stuff just disconnects. The only real reliability issue that I have seen from Homey was with a couple of Z-Wave devices that initially were not staying connected. The automations wouldn't run reliably for about the first week, but then the network kind of figured itself out and it started working. So I had some tools that told me the repeater that I was using wasn't working quite right, but it all self-corrected. As with most Zigbee networks, there can be disconnections. 
This is happening for me with Homey when I buy really cheap products. Okay, so I bought a few Tuya Zigbee bulbs. Those are really far from the hub. And so that's more on the product and in how you're building your network. I put a repeater out near to those bulbs and since then I've only experienced one time where they've gone offline. Otherwise, that reliability comes back. So what I'm trying to point out to you is that the products drive your system level reliability as much as the hub does. Samsung, Homey, and really any other maker of a hub will have the same problems if you're using gear that can't stay connected on its own. Now in all fairness, SmartThings does have more platform level issues that will hit your home more often. I'm still getting those outages on about a monthly basis and they're not long term or long lasting, but I've also seen more disconnections from Zigbee and Z-Wave products with smart things. And as a final aside to this reliability section with the wrong matter products, I'm having problems on all platforms, but my problems with smart things are definitely much larger. I've already explained that your options with new products are far less with Homey, and that's a problem for Atham to sort out and to make better. Like if they want to charge the prices they are for their hub, they gotta get on that. As smart things is going to give you quite a few options for every device type. And in contrast, you're probably gonna get one to two with Homey, maybe more in some cases, and for some of the bigger types of devices. However, what I do like is that I'm finding inexpensive options with Homey, and they seem to be expanding on those. And companies like Ikea and Third Reality and Zoos, they're all available to me and actually two of those are new integration options. One of the best purchases I've made is a bunch of Ikea color bulbs. They've been great. Now I think the other side of this is how Matter is going. Matter with smart things, honestly like pulling teeth, but it's because I get stuck on the registration page all the time during the setup process with Matter. It just doesn't work right. I don't know that everyone's experiencing this, but I do hear other people complaining about it. Now, the Matter experience with Homey, it's been very good. They are generally keeping things connected well. And again, most of my problems are self-inflicted. Now, I did have one Matter product disconnect from Homey, but I've seen that one disconnect everywhere. So again, you're hearing me say that it is often product related and less about the controller or the hub. But that's not entirely the case with Matter and definitely the edge goes to Homey. I mentioned earlier that Homey is pretty reliant on the developer community to get the new smart home products to work with their platform. You just end up waiting for developers and sometimes you have to ask. And sometimes you have to wait a very long time. And even worse, sometimes those products won't ever be compatible. This was similar to what SmartThings was like a few years ago. They had developers that would help you create solutions for bringing in new gear. They would create custom drivers. They were called something else at the time, but that would teach their hub how to work with the new product. Now, Samsung has since transitioned to what they call their edge driver program, and this both brings drivers locally to being on their hub, which means local execution, that's great, but it's also meant they have largely walked away from a good developer community. There are a few people who still develop for that platform, but I'm seeing as much, if not more activity with Homey. And I'm definitely getting the sense that people are happier with the solutions created by Homey's developer community. On the SmartThings side, the edge drivers I've been using have been problematic. They've been breaking. I showed you guys a great Hue Edge driver uh, about a year ago now that allowed you to take that entire system to another level, but it's now been broken by what Samsung is doing. So it's just not friendly to try and do anything custom with smart things. They're entirely reliant on their existing Edge drivers. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. You get more products with Samsung, but they have to behave in this standard way. And when they don't, it doesn't tend to go well. We're constantly seeing innovation in smart home products. So, you know, when they're kind of new and exciting, it might not work right with Samsung. And that's kind of been my experience. So you kind of have this choice being a little bit up in the air, whether you get a new product into Homey ever, 
or just accepting this lesser working situation with smart things. And I don't love either situation, but I do like that Homie is still cultivating that developer community. And I think as long as they do that, it's my preference. The automations you can create between these two platforms. Honestly, I'm wasting my time comparing the two. Just suffice it to say that you can pretty much do anything with Homey and I've already shown you the cycle through action with that Ikea remote, but I've also integrated that automation with Amazon. I'm running routines over there at the same time. That's letting me get all these fancy effects going and all of this is happening with a really simple automation. It's not difficult stuff, but to do that with smart things, honestly, I don't think I could do it. It would certainly be very difficult and I don't trust that the automation would run correctly every time. In fact, my experience has been that it would not run reliably with smart things. So my update for you guys is that I'm loving the changeover. I'm starting the process of testing out Akara and Habitat so that we can do comparisons of those different platforms too. And for those of you considering a move to Homey, yeah, it's absolutely a much more expensive hub, but you can understand how this system works by watching the beginner's guide that's up on screen there. It's to give you all that good information to make a good decision. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, live smart.